this is from the book of Ecclesiasticus. As the, the vine I have brought forth has an odor, and my flowers are the fruit of, of honor and riches. I am the mother of fair love, and of fear, and of knowledge, and of holy hope. In me is all grace of the way and of the truth, and in me is all hope of life and of virtue. Come over to me, all ye that desire me, and be filled with my fruits. For my spirit is sweet above honey, and mine inheritance above honey and the honeycomb. My memory is unto life, is unto everlasting generations. They that eat me shall yet hunger, and they that drink me shall yet thirst. He that hearkeneth, hearkeneth to me shall not be confounded, and they that work by me shall not sin. They that explain me shall have life everlasting. Continuation of the Holy Gospel according to St. John. <clears throat> At that time they stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother, and his mother's sister Mary of Clavis and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore had seen his mother and disciple standing whom he loved, he saith to his mother, Woman, behold thy son. And after that he saith to his disciple, Behold thy mother. And from that hour the disciple took her to his own. <clears throat> And this first Saturday of the month, July 4th, with the growing uneasiness in this country, evil communists trying to destroy this country, as well as ongoing modernists trying to destroy the church. Today's talk will be about the problem of evil. First of all, a quotation from the book of Job at the beginning. <clears throat> After Job was, uh, God allowed Satan to take away Job, Job's possessions. This is what Job's initial reaction was. Naked came I out of my mother's womb, and naked shall return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord hath taken away. As it hath pleased the Lord, so is it done. Blessed be the name of the Lord. As one Catholic writer summarized, perhaps the most popular argument against the existence of God is based on the timeless question, if there is truly a good God, why then is there evil in the world? Typically, the argument runs as, <clears throat> since our world is full of evil, and a good and all-powerful God would never allow for evil, God therefore cannot exist. This argument usually involves more emotion and typically anger than reason. But the question is important to consider. It can be phrased many ways, and a few of those will be considered in this short sermon. First of all, we must consider the meaning of evil. There are basically two kinds of evil, moral and physical. Moral evil is willful sin, while physical evil is natural harm. Examples of moral evil are murder, adultery, fornication, theft, sorcery, abortion, and so on. Examples of physical evil are famine, illness, natural disasters, and death. Now evil is not something in itself, but rather a lack of something that should be present. For example, a lie <clears throat> lacks in truth. God does not create evil since it's not a thing to be created. Evil is an imperfection, a lack or void in God's creation. Focusing first on moral evil, <clears throat> the question could be phrased as if there is a good God, then why did he create morally evil people? In considering this question, we must realize that God does not create evil people. As the book of Genesis tells us, God created everything good. Being all-knowing, God knowingly create people who will, in fact, in the future be sinners. But knowledge and control are two different things. 
God created us with the gift of free will, the ability to willfully choose him or to reject him. We choose to sin to reject God through willful disobedience. This rejection is a void in God's plan for us. God wants us to love him, but without free will, we cannot sincerely love him. We cannot be forced to love someone. If God created us without free will, we will be living machines and not made in his image and likeness. God permits moral evil to the extent that he gives us free will. Thanks to us, the moral evil in the world is a result of our choice. Focusing next on physical evil, the question can be stated as follows. If there is a good God, why are there pain, suffering, death, and so on in the world? Perhaps a more popular version of this question is, if there is a just God, why do good people suffer? Now, suffering does serve a purpose in the material world. Pain retards us from damaging our bodies, for example. I do not put my hand in fire, mainly out of fear of pain. Another good example is the pain of a vagina can warn us of an impending heart attack. Another good example, soldiers endure extreme physical hardship and suffering in boot camp training in order to discipline their bodies for better performance on the battlefield. Or the popular expression, no pain, no gain. So even for good people, such suffering is not totally absurd. Another thing, material things operate according to physical laws. For example, fire operates according to the laws of thermodynamics. The same laws which allow us to heat our homes during the coldness of the winter time can allow our homes to burn down to the ground. To prevent the latter evil will require a miracle, a suspension of physical laws. God permits physical evil to the extent that he does not perform one miracle after another in order to stop suffering, thus causing the ordinary to become extraordinary. Physical laws also apply the same both to the good people and to the bad people, as even our Lord Jesus Christ mentions in St. Matthew. Perhaps the real question is not why does God allow for physical evil, but why did God create us in a material world? Some suggest that, as St. Paul, in 2 Corinthians 1, verses 8 to 9, that God created us in an imperfect material world so that we would not rely on ourselves, but come to love and rely on the perfect God. We were created with a desire and a hunger which could only be satisfied by God. This void of happiness calls us to him. In the famous words of St. Augustine, quote, For thou hast made us for thyself, O God, and our heart is restless until it rests in thee. The famous church father, St. Irenaeus of Leo, <clears throat> back in the second century, has another explanation. Here's a quotation from him. Where there is no exertion, there is no appreciation. Sight would not be so desirable if we did not know what a great evil blindness is. Health also is made more precious by the experience of sickness. Light by comparison with darkness. Life with death. In the same way, the heavenly kingdom is more precious to those who have known the earthly one. But the more precious it is, the more we love it. And the more we love it, the more glorious shall, be, shall we be in the presence of God. God therefore permitted all these things so that we, instructed by them all, might in future be prudent in all things 
and wisely taught to love God might abide in, might abide in that perfect love. And a quote from the Saint Irenaeus of Leo, church father in the second century. Furthermore, suffering and sacrifice can help us overcome our selfishness. The book of Job in the Holy Scripture deals with this problem in a beautifully poetic manner. Just recap what this book is about. Job is a righteous, a just, God-fearing man. However, God allows Satan to inflict Job with horrible disasters and disease to test his loyalty. Satan wants to show God that Job's faith is false or superficial. Under intense suffering, Job argues with, with his friends about the suffering of the innocent. And towards the end of the book, God enters a debate and responds, quote, Who is this that wrappeth up sentences in unskillful words? Gird up thy loins like a man. I will ask thee, and answer thou me. Where was thou when I laid down the foundations of the earth? Tell me if thou hast understanding. End of quote. Will we have likewise argue with the mighty by complaining about evil? That him who would correct God give an answer. So God responds by telling Job that his wisdom and power are beyond man's ability to understand. Also, man is not in control of the universe. His virtues alone do not ensure earthly happiness. And so Job humbly closes the debate with the words, I know that thou canst do all things, and no thought is hid from thee. Therefore I have spoken unwisely, and things that, are, that above measure exceed, exceeded my knowledge. Therefore I reprehend, reprehend myself, and do penance in dust and ashes. Sacred scripture here suggests that we should accept suffering and trust in God. Later on in the New Testament, Jesus Christ our Lord responds this way on the cross. Now for Christians, the suffering and the pain of this life can become the joy and glory of our eternal life. In Holy Scripture, St. Paul connects physical evil, namely death, with moral evil, sin. Quotation from Romans 5.12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered into this world, and by sin death, and so death passed upon all men in whom all have sinned. In other words, through Adam's sin, at his original sin, all, we all sin and suffer death. However, God is merciful, Christianity offers hope. For by a man came death, by a man the resurrection of the dead. And as in Adam all die, so also in Christ all shall be made alive. Quotation from Corinthians. Hence Christ's death on the cross fills the void caused by sin. Even though we suffer pain and death for our sins, God being sinless, accepted as a man pain and death on the cross for our salvation. True love involves sacrifice, and Jesus Christ has set an example for each one of us. Quotation from the Hebrews, And whereas indeed he, that is Jesus, was the Son of God, he learned obedience by the things which he suffered. And being consummated, he became, co became the cause that... He, he became that him cause that we will follow. If any man will follow me, another quotation from the Holy Gospel, if any man will follow me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Therefore, as Christians, we can hope in eternal happiness thanks to the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. As again, as quotation from St. Paul from the Romans, we 
are the sons of God, and sons, and sons yet so also heirs, indeed of God and joint heirs with Christ. Yet so if we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified with him, for I reckon that the sufferings of this time are not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be real to us. Thus, in our suffering, we share in the sufferings of Christ. So in heaven, we share in his glory. Our sinful world is the unfortunate result of human choice. Remember, not even Satan, the devil, can force us to sin. Pain and suffering and death are integral parts of the material world due to Adam's sin. But Christianity offers hope through the sufferings of our Lord. Evil in this world is not, is not a disproof of God but rather a constant reminder of our need for the perfect God of revelation. And in our current crisis, last but not least in our current crisis, both in the world and in the church, we know, both from the book of Daniel and the book of the Apocalypse, as well as from various prophecies from the saints, especially the Blessed Virgin Mary herself, at Quito especially, Ecuador, La Salette, and, and Fatima, that we must suffer these tribulations the world and the church must be purified before the triumph of the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the golden era of peace and holiness that will follow. The words of St. Augustine should come to, come to mind when he said, quote, God judged it better to bring good out of evil than to suffer no evil to exist. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.